Thank you, everyone. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk about ggplot2.spark R, which we developed for scalable big data visualization. This is a joint work between Sungyungwan University and SK Telecom. Before we move on to the main topic, I'd like to introduce the speakers, including myself. My name is Hang Ho Jung. I'm a senior manager at SK Telecom, which is the biggest wireless communication service provider in Korea. I'm interested in R, Spark, and machine learning stuff, including the MLLib. Jung Hyun Baeb will, will show the demo later part. He, he is a graduate student at Sungyungwan University. He's interested in R, JavaScript, and Spark. This slide shows the typical big data analytics pipeline. The pipeline starts from collecting different types of data, including log data, structured, and unstructured data. The data are stored in heterogeneous storages, including log store, data store, and cloud storages. And once a user wants to analyze the data using some queries, the data are extracted and transformed to be analyzed. And at the final stage, the visualization is needed to help the users understand the results better. And our work here today is focused on this visualization stage. And why do we need the big data visualization? Actually, we interviewed a business unit within SK Telecom. The unit had a typical size, database size of 70 million records with 330 columns. The unit was analyzing the database using only R on a single load scale of server, which is fine, but the unit has much bigger databases that cannot be handled by this server. Therefore, the unit has several needs for big data visualization. The first, they, the unit wants to use R because it was the familiar language for them. And they, the unit wants to have easy to use APIs and wants scalable solution for bigger databases. In this regard, R has great visualization packages, including the popular ggplot2, the base graphics for simple graphs, GGVs for interactive graphics, and iGraph for network visualization. But these packages cannot process Spark data frames. Therefore, they have not been used for big data visualization with the Spark framework. Among the packages mentioned in the earlier slide, the ggplot2 is arguably the most popular visualization package for R. It is based on the layered grammar of graphics, so it has the base object and a rich set of refining components and user-friendly wrappers, and they are making it easy to produce high-quality graphs. But unfortunately, it's limited to a single load processing, so there, this slide shows the top 10 packages in R from Computer World in May 2015. The x-axis shows the name of the packages. The y-axis shows the number of downloads for the package. And as we can see from this graph, the ggplot2 is the second most popular package in, among total R packages, and also it is the top visualization package. Using this ggplot2, you can draw awesome plots like these examples easily. For example, these map-related graphs and contour-related graphs and, and so on. So this is why this ggplot2 is so popular. Therefore, we thought about what if we can use the ggplot2 with SPAGAR. By taking the benefits from both ggplot2 and SPAGAR, we made the ggplot2.spagar package. 
which is an R package extending ggplot2 to visualize big data represented in Spark data frame. Just like ggplot2, it supports a variety of graphs having simple and easy APIs. Just like Spark, it can support scalable, scalable and distributing, distributed processing. And among others, it can also it can support Spark data frame as well as R data frame. This is the key thing. This and the next slide will show how greatly our package simplifies the task of drawing a histogram using the Spark data frame. The left table shows a Spark data frame having six columns, including date, time, place, item, price, and payment. And you want to draw a histogram of the price in the red box so that we can have the right histogram in the figure. Before we used our new package ggplot2.sparkr, you will probably need to write many lines of code to pre-process the Spark data frame using SparkR API. Before you want to draw the histogram chart using the ggplot2 API, you first compute the histogram DF, which is a Spark data frame, and eventually the Spark data frame needs to be converted to an R data frame as an input to the existing ggplot API using the collect API. But after using the new package, it just takes one line. So you can take the Spark data frame as an input to the familiar ggplot API, and it just draws the histogram graph with just one line. This slide summarizes the main features of our new package. It is scalable, so it can handle the amount of data beyond the capacity of the single node. And the performance scales to the number of nodes, which will be shown in a later part. It's easy to use because there are no changes to the existing ggplot2 APIs. Therefore, no trainings are required for existing ggplot2 users. It's also readily deployable since it's using the Spagar API only. Therefore, no re modifications are required for the Spark itself. So far, we have overviewed the main features of our work, and the rest of this talk consists of five more parts regarding how to use it with a short demo and the architecture for those who are interested in the, in the internals more, and the performance of this, our new package. The status and plan will be provided with the summary at the last stage. By this time, I think you may be interested in how to use this package. So, and I would say using ggplot2.sparkr is as easy as one to three. The, so it roughly has three stages of install, create, and draw. The first step installs the package from GitHub using the dev tools in R. The second step creates the data frame from whatever data sources you like. But in this case, we used Hadoop distributed file system with JSON file format. And the third step, just draw it using the familiar ggplot2 API, as we can see. It just takes the Spark data frame as an input, and in this case, it just draws a flipped bar graph. As you can see, the APIs are exactly the same as the data of ggplot. At this moment, I think it's better to see a short demo, and Jonghyun behind me will show the short demo. Jonghyun. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Mr. Zhang. And now I'm going to show a live demo regarding simple plot with sales log data. This demo has three steps, as Mr. Zhang said before, install, create, and roll. OK, 
Okay, this is our sample of data set. This data, this data is downloaded from Udacity and it consists of purchase information about date, item, payment method, place, price of market, and time. Okay, now I will bring on RStudio console. Okay, this is an RStudio supporting graphical IDE for R. We have our demo codes in here and our SQL this code line by line. Okay, let's see the codes together. The step one is an installation. Currently, ggplot spark R can be downloaded from GitHub, so you can install this package from there. And this installation command will automatically install packages that ggplot spark R depends on. And if it works well, you can see a successful message. Okay, the line of six and seven imported libraries which are installed in your local environment. And ggproc.sparkr runs on sparkr package, so you must import sparkr package first, and then import ggproc.sparkr. Okay, the line 10 and 11 create a Spark and SQL context for communication between R and Spark, which is very standard when you use Spark R package. Okay, the step two is creation. Spark R can root data of three different data types, a JSON, Parquet, and R data frame. In this demo, we use a JSON data format and hard file system. On line 14, the sales log data are read from hot file system using readJSON function. And I'm gonna check that the data is loaded correctly using showDF function. And you can see a table showing the purchase, purchase information. Okay, next, I will cache our data set in memory to save our execution time during this demo. Okay, the so step three is on drawing. This command is an example of drawing stacked bar graph using Spark data frame and applying a flip option between X and Y axis. Okay, let's see the parameters and functions. Most of ggplot Spark R is started by ggplot function. This function creates the main object of graph containing all parameters and methods for processing data. In this function, Users specify their parameters about input data or axis and other information for drawing a graph. Okay, in this example, we use a Spark data frame uh, as we wrote it before, and we set an item column on the x axis, and it is stacked by a payment column. The plus operator combines the graph information with graph object and geom bar function as a draw on a bar chart. And if you want to apply more options in your graph, you can use additional plus operators and write or other, other option functions. In this example, we use a code flip function. And this function flips x and y axis. Okay, now let's see the result. Okay, this is the result of stacked bar graph using Spark data frame. And I will save this image and open it on the new window. Okay, now let's compare this result with the example of local R data frame. Okay, before we start it, I will create a local R data frame named DFR. And next command is an example of drawing stacked bar graph in the same way as we did before, but in this case, we use a local R data frame. As you can see, we use the exact the same command except the, we use the different input data types which you use a local R data frame instead of Spark data frame. Okay, now I operate this function using a local R data frame. And this is the result of using local R data frame. And this is the result of using Spark data frame. Well, as you see, both commands, the same, the, both commands show the same result. In other words, ggplot Spark R can seamlessly handle both Spark data frames and local R data frame. And it preserves the same look and feel in both cases. Okay, let's see one more example using Spark data frame. 
This graph is a histogram chart for price of item. You can use this graph to analyze that which range is the best selling count in this market and which is the worst case. Okay, using, this com using these packages, you can analyze the big data much easier and with high quality graphs. Okay, this is the end of live demo and Mr. Zhang will take over again. Okay, Mr. Zhang. Thank you, Zhang Yuan, for the nice demo. And the next three slides will show the graph types and options currently supported by our new package. We saw some of them already, and ggplot users must be very familiar with this topic because the APIs are exactly the same as those of the ggplot2. Our new package supports six graph types and 15 graph options, where the options are related to positions, facets, scales, coordinates, ranges, and text. I show more details in the next slides. The statsum shows the sum of the unique values where bigger dots represent higher counts. The GM box plot draws a box and whisker plot where median value and interquartile range are, sh are drawn as a box. GM bin 2D shows a heap draws a heat map where different counts are displayed in different colors. Geom Freak Poly draws a frequency polygon where frequency data points are connected as a polygon. With three position-related options, including position stack, position fill, and position dodge, you can adjust the positions of the graph so that they will not have this they will not occupy the same space. With two facet-related options, including facet grid and facet wrap, you can lay out multiple subgraphs in two dimensions for a display. The next six slides are those for those who are interested in the architecture. The red, three red boxes are implemented parts for the ggplot2.spark R, and the blue, three blue boxes show the existing ggplot2 package. The input checking stage determines whether the input is an R data frame or a Spark data frame, and a three-stage pipeline is used to draw the graphs. First, the parameter extraction stage extracts the input-related data, including X, Y, color, facet, scale, and geom. The data processing stage gets the data from the original data source and processes the data using graph parameters. And the plotting stage, which is common for both, draws the graph on display windows. When the input is an R data frame, the three stages in ggplot2 are executed as user. But when the Spark data frame is an input, the parameter extraction in ggplot2.spark are extracts the input-related parameters and graph type and layer option, and they are passed to the data processing stage. With the Spark data frame as a data input and with the parameters, graph type, and layer options extracted from the parameter extraction stage. The data processing uses 12 internal stages to process Spark data frame, and it is converted to an R data frame. And the calculated R data frame is passed to the plotting stage for drawing. The next two slides show the data flow when the input is a Spark data frame. From a graph function, ggplot2.spark R extracts parameter, script type, and layer option to make an object in the R process. And those parameters, graph type, and lay layer option in, are parsed in the Spark context, and they are passed to Spark functions related to graph processing. The Spark functions read the data from the workers, and the results are stored in the 
new data frames. And the data, resulting data frames are combined to one Spark data frame within the master node, and it is converted again to an R data frame so that it could be used for plotting the graph using the ggplot2 function. The next four slides show the performance, and here is our experimental setup. We have an eight node Spark cluster, we have seven worker only nodes, and we have one master drive and also a worker for, for that node. The table explains the node parameters. So each node has a CPU of eight cores, 32 gigabytes of memory, and we use the Spark version 1.5. And therefore, Spark worker, each Spark worker has eight cores and 30 gigabytes of memory. We use the bar graph as the workload for the data set described in the demo session. And the first slide shows the scalability. The x-axis is the number of Spark cluster nodes, and y-axis is the speed up in times in comparison with the speed of the single Spark node. The input size is 406 million rows times six columns, and we tested 12 times, and we showed the average as well as minimum and maximum values together for each data point. As you can see from the graph, the performance scales to the number of cluster nodes, which is log linear in our case, according to the number of Spark nodes. And this slide shows the performance with the varying data sizes. So x-axis is the number of data elements in millions with six columns, and the y-axis is the execution time in seconds. The execution time can be broken down into two parts, the loading time in reddish color and processing time in greenish color. Actually, the sky, sky blue color here. And this is a stacked area graph. And as you can see from the graph, the slopes are almost the same, and it's relatively stable. So we can expect that the throughput, which is the inverse of the slope, remains relatively stable. And since the loading time takes significant first portion of the execution time, if we preload the data into the memory in advance, we can expect that the execution time will be much faster. And this dotted line shows the largest data possible for a single R node can handle, which is 320 million records. And beyond this point, the single R node cannot work anymore. The next three slides shows the status and plan of our project. We have our own project web page, and it has the information about the details and GitHub link. In order to report the bugs or to request the features, you can use the GitHub issue page listed here, or you can send an email to the ggplot to the Spark our mailing list. We have API coverage and future plan on this slide. The ggplot2 has the total number of 135 functions, including the graph types and options. Our prim primary target was about 45, which we think are suitable for big data visualization. We implemented 21 of them, which corresponds to 47%. And as you can see, there are still many functions, graph options, and types that need to be developed to fully cover the total number of APIs. Therefore, the contributions will be welcome. And our future plan is to register the project to the sparkpackages.org and CRAN, 
and we want to improve the API coverage by developing more functions and grab type and options. And we want to optimize the performance in the future. And in summary, about ggplot 2spark that we developed, it is, it is an R package extending ggplot 2 to take Spark data frame as well as R data frame as input. It is scalable, it is easy to use, and readily deployable. So feedbacks and contributions from Spark community will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It was a great presentation. Um, so I, I think from one of the last slides you mentioned, uh, you think about 45 of the total 135 ggplot um, plotting types can be implemented. Can you speak to what's the limiting factor? I'm assuming it's, you know, you have to do some sort of aggregation so that you can collect all those statistics back on the driver that's actually rendering the graph. So like, you probably couldn't do a point you know, spread with just millions and millions of points because you would yeah. always run out of RAM trying to render that. Is that, are there any other limitations that I'm not thinking of? Uh, actually, I think that's a good point and that's our initial primary target which requires some sort of statistical aggregation first so that it could, the data could be fit into a smaller size of the memory and if we draw the raw data like plotting dots for whatever amount of data and those types are excluded from our initial primary target. And in our future work, I think we can use some density related graphs or we can use some samples, sampling techniques to, to re reduce the amount of data that we want to draw. So we will reduce, we will target those kind of options. Is there a question? Do you know if this works in the Databricks notebooks or any kind of notebooks? Um, we didn't try the notebooks yet, but I think if we because we have developed only 21 of the total APIs, so I think for those, fun those, those functions that are not fully compatible with the functionalities within the notebooks. So if we add more APIs and functions, I think in the future, our open source will be used in the, the notebooks together. Any other questions? I can confirm that ggplot2 is supported in Databricks notebooks. Um, any other questions? Okay, um, let's thank Sano and uh, John with a round of applause.